Hello, my name is David Higgins and I'm a lecturer in English Literature at the University of Leeds. The topic of this lecture is John Clare, Identity and Place. Although I teach in a range of areas, my research specialism is the late 18th and the early 19th centuries. At university, most, if not all, of your tutors would be active researchers and publishers in their specialism. Sometimes I think students worry that research distracts academics from the business of teaching. But ideally, at least, it shouldn't be like that. In my view, academics who are involved in cutting-edge research and are themselves undergoing a process of intellectual discovery are best able to challenge and stimulate students and to help students themselves become active, engaged researchers. Being a researcher is about being intellectually curious and flexible, and this is a quality often wanted by employers. The relationship between research and teaching is a complex one. I think in some respects the sort of research I do informs all my teaching, even when it's of text that I've never written on. But this podcast is on an author who's central to my current research, and as it happens last week I was visiting Peterborough to look at material in some of John Clare's archives, and it was really interesting to see work that it was actually written in his own handwriting. For a long time I've been fascinated by the way in which literature seeks to explore and represent the self. My current research focuses on autobiographical writing during the Romantic period, that is, writing about the individual self. And I'm interested in how such writing seeks to position the self within individual places and spaces. So that might be something very specific, like a particular village or region, or something more broad, like a, a national community, like England or Britain. So I'm interested in how texts plot out a sort of geography of the self. For me, John Clare is significant in terms of this material because so much of his poetry and prose is concerned with the importance of place to identity. However, I think there's a sort of myth about Clare, that he was so attached to the village of Helpston, he had such a strong sense of the local, that when he, whenever he moved away from Helpston, his identity sort of fragmented to the extent that he suffered severe mental illness. But I don't think we can simply say, well, that's because of sort of disruptions in terms of the geography of his life. I argue instead that Clare was always fascinated by the experience of being out of place and how that developed the self. And it's, it's a simple point, really. It's when we're at most outside our comfort zones that we start properly to define who we are. Um, thinking of my own life, when I moved from Bedfordshire to Sussex and Brighton to go to university as an undergraduate, I think it was when I was in what to me was quite a strange and odd place that I started to work out who I was or who I wanted to be. So for Claire, I think, he was very interested in that process of dislocation and what that does to the self. And I think he also had a sense of belonging to a wider national community. He wasn't just a writer of the local. I'm going to focus on his great and complex poem, The Flitting, which I think is of particular significance. And this lecture is going to offer a sustained analysis of the poem. But the idea of this analysis is it's going to help you to get to grips with some of Clare's other work as well. You'll see from the slide that I've given a few um, useful dates to get a sense of the contours of Clare's life. So the time that he was at Helpston, when he moved to Northborough, when he went to the asylums and so on. Um, he spent 25 years of his life in asylums. And the flitting is often used as evidence for the moment when Clare's identity started to go. In 1832, when he moved from Helpston to Northborough, which was, I think, three miles up the road. But I think this reading's very simplistic, as I'll come on to. There's no doubt that Clare was very attached to Helpston. And he, he writes at length of how important the fields, the trees, the animals, the birds were to his identity. In 1809, when Clare was 16... An Enclosure Act applying to the village was approved by Parliament. Enclosure was a process by which open fields shared by the people of the village were closed off and made the property of landowners. The effects of enclosure are subject to debate by historians, and, and some might defend it on the grounds that it made agriculture more efficient. But certainly the loss of the common rights by peasants was very much resisted at the time and probably did concentrate wealth more in the hands of the few. Clare's poetry often looks to an idyllic pre-enclosure Helpston and the open fields of his youth, which are now lost. 
So in that sense, even when he was living in Helpston in the 1810s and 20s, there's already a sense of loss and disruption that affected his identity. And also, I, I would add that I think for, for Claire, and there's lots of evidence for this in the autobiographical writings, the experience of, of being a reader and then being a writer was something that actually cut him off to some extent from the local community. When walking around the fields was generally seen as something you did as a, as a part of your, your labour, Claire did it when he was composing poetry and so on, and that actually marked him off from other members of the community, made him seem a bit weird. So I think it'd be wrong to see Claire as someone who was sort of felt like an integral part of the community in his youth. In January 1832, when he was 39, he moved for various reasons to the village of, of Northborough. Although this was only three miles from Helpston, it did lead to a sense of confusion. And on the slide you can see an extract from a letter to his publisher, John Taylor, from 1832. I have had some difficulties to leave the woods and heaths and favourite spots that have known me for so long, for the very molehills on the heath and the old trees in the hedges seem bidding me farewell. Claire does something which, which is quite typical of his writings here. He emphasises his connection to the local environment through personification, projecting his own dislocation and loss onto the natural world. So rather than him saying goodbye to the molehills or the trees, they're saying goodbye to him. And I think once, one thing that Claire often does in his writing is find ways of suggesting an interconnectedness between the human and the non-human, and that's an example of, of, of what I mean. The poem The Flitting, which was written shortly after the move to Northborough, describes his sense of dislocation, but also seeks to find ways of dealing with it. Rather, therefore, than being a straightforward cry from Claire's heart, it's actually a very complex and very measured poem. So I'm going to focus a bit more on that poem and, and deal with the, the opening few stanzas in the next section. The feeling of strangeness is conveyed very eloquently in the opening stanzas of the, of the flitting. I've left my own old home of homes, green fields and every pleasant place. The summer like a stranger comes, I pause and hardly know her face. I miss the hazel's happy green, the bluebell's quiet hanging bloom where envy's sneer was never seen, where staring malice never comes. Alone and in a stranger scene, far from spots my heart esteems, the sun in seems to lose its way, nor knows the quarter it is in. Here every tree is strange to me, all foreign things where'er I go, there's none where boyhood made a swee, or clambered up to rob a crow. There's a lot to say about those lines. Um, the first thing you might notice is a lack of punctuation. Claire generally